Well, hello, Calvary. I am Pastor Sean, and I have your word for the day. Today's passage is out of Exodus 20, verses 1 through 3. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. The question I have for you today is this. Do you think God meant this? Do you think God meant it when he said you shall have no other gods other than me? If this is something you haven't thought about lately or even at all, then can I just ask you to think about it? Do you take what he says seriously? Because what we find is story after story of God's people not taking this passage seriously. And they would adopt other gods or other idols. They would worship something else in God's place. And then God would respond by giving them what they wanted. He allowed the world to take over their lives and their communities, and it never ended up good. God does not respond well to his people worshiping other gods, and he has every right to. Now, an even more important question is this. Does God still want us to follow this passage today? I would hope you're all shaking your head with a very strong yes, because of course God cares about this. He is the same then as he is now. He is forever a jealous God and an all-loving, righteous God who desires a relationship with you. This is part of the gospel message we hear. It's the, the same God who came down to earth, fully human, fully God, and died for you in order to make a way for that relationship. He didn't die so you can worship idols. He didn't die so you can justify every bad behavior you have in your life that takes you further from him. The way a lot of us live our lives right now resembles a half in and half out attitude. I don't think we're taking this command to have no other gods before him very seriously. And Paul, the apostle Paul had to deal with the same thing in the Galatians church. Church, check this out in Galatians 1, 6 through 7. I'm shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. You see, the gospel that we're talking about is about Jesus making a way for us to put God first in our lives through his death, burial, and resurrection. But it also requires us to repent from our old ways, our old idols, our old gods. What gods do you have before God? It's almost like we think we can live this life half in and half out, when in reality God is calling for us to be fully in and fully about his mission and fully for his church and, and fully about the plans that he has for your life. So the next question is this, what gods have you placed before him? What are you worshiping? This question should require you to think, because sometimes even things we think are good are actually idols in our lives, false gods that want to steal our attention away from God. How about our pursuit of money? And maybe, maybe this is the most obvious one. And yet, people still let the love of money motivate them more than they let the word of God motivate them. How about the opinions of others? Maybe this is a false God in your life where you care more about how people see you than how God sees you. So what other gods do you have in your life? You should really take a moment to think because making God jealous never seems to work out in anybody's favor. Stealing God's attention away from him and giving it to something else much less deserving, or worse, giving your attention to something that's trying to kill, kill you or steal you away from him or destroy you is just a ticket for disaster. So God is very clear on how you should stay away from an unintentional polytheistic lifestyle, meaning many gods. It's this, remember and repent. Let's read our Exodus verse again. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. God is reminding them of the good and the amazing things he has done in their lives. He has freed them from captivity, from a 400 year slavery. And he reminded them about how amazing he is. The God who has freed you, who has grown you, who has saved you and loved you is that same God. So we need to know that, we need to remember that, and then we need to get rid of those false gods who are powerless in our lives, who can literally do nothing in your life besides lead you astray and steal God's deserved attention. So we need to remember what God has done for you in your life. The real God, he does what money, money can't, he does what re reputation can't, he does what false religions can't. He does what nothing else and no one else can do, and he deserves our full attention in our full worship. 
Colossians 1, 21 through 23 says this. This, the gospel message, includes you who were once far away from God. You who were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions, yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he's brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard that good news. So let's be people who takes God seriously when he says to put no other gods before him. Identify the false gods and idols in your life. Who or what are you worshiping? What is getting your attention more than God is? And then get rid of those false gods in your life. Nothing can do what God has done, and only God is worthy of our praise and worship and full attention. I hope you remember that about God. Be blessed, Calvary, and have a good day.